Welcome to the Paul Chandler Show, everyone. I'm your host, Paul Chandler. In tonight's episode, we'll be doing coding on the whiteboard, and we'll be looking at the HickBix book for the J-Codes. So if you have your HickBix book handy, it'd be good to have it out. But with the J-Codes, dealing with the drugs, no matter if it's brand name, generic name, and all the doses, and all the units, that's what we'll be looking at for tonight. So stay tuned and we come right back, we'll be looking at the J-Code section in the HickBix manual. Welcome back everyone. So it's a nice episode of the Paul Chandler Show where we're going to be looking at J-codes and HickPicks. So dealing with drugs and how we code them as far as the units and what the dosages as well. So now while looking at the J-codes, several different publishers, there's different ways how they will list the brand names and generic names of drugs. So for example, in your HickPicks book, if you look at code, oh let's say J0130. J0130 Absimixamab, and I know that it's not how you pronounce it, but uh, we're good with that. So J0130 Absimixamab, however that is in your book, that is, as far as the font, color, and size, that is how your publisher does the generic name of the drug. And then also under J0130, we have the word Reopro. However, it is in that publisher as well, that's how they list it as a brand name. So a lot of drugs have generic names and brand names. So depending on the publisher, just remember how that's notated. For example, J0130, Absimixamab, that's the generic name, and Reopro is the brand name. And if you're like me, anytime you see Reopro, I don't know why, but Oprah Winfrey, Oprah comes in my head. So Reopro, Oprah, if that works for you, yeah, whatever. But works for me, J0130. Now notice with this code, it says that one unit of absimixamab, and I'm gonna use that phrase because that's a lot cooler to say, absimixamab. How J0130, one unit equals 10 milligrams. And if we were to have J0130 times two, 20 milligrams. J0130 times three, 30 milligrams. And I think you kind of get the idea after that. So with the J-codes, notice though in where they are in the HickPix book, it'll always list the generic name, it'll list the brand name if there's one, and there's also a dosage. Now one thing that I say that when we're talking about medical coding, watch your numbers, watch your numbers, watch your numbers. Because every number, as far as the CPT codes and the HickPix, when there's a number in it, it's easy to get miscoded just by missing the number. So for example, J0130, one unit of that is 10 milligrams. You can look at your HitPix book, and well, let's pick up another funky name to try to pronounce. Um, J0202. J0202, Alentamazunubab. Again, we'll just go with it on that one. That's just one milligram. So watch your numbers, watch your numbers, watch your numbers. So going back to my good old Absimixamab, J0130, one unit is 10 milligrams. Now, different insurance carriers have different rules based on the phrase like coding for waste. So let's say, for example, that with the abzimixamab, that the patient is going to need, oh, let's say they're going to need 22 milligrams of abzimixamab. So looking at 22 milligrams, how that is between 20 and 30, so as far as coding it, and again, this is where you want to watch out for and look based on your individual insurance carriers, who your patient is, what their policy is for coding for waste. So let's say if the patient needs 22 milligrams of absimixamab, and I will say, disclaimer, I have absolutely no idea if that's an overdose. Let's just say it's not, because I'm not a doctor. And I don't remember what episode of Grey's Anatomy even had that script before, so I can't even say that as far as I learned it on TV. Let's just say though 22 milligrams is not an overdose. Well, if a patient needs 22 milligrams, you can't give them just two doses of it because that's only going to be 20. But if we give them three dosages of it, that's going to be 30. So remember though, we're coding these J codes for reimbursement for the provider. 
So if the patient needs 22, then, okay, 20 is not enough, 30 is going to be too much. But with that 8 milligram difference there, because 22 minus from 8, so the patient's going to get 22 milligrams, and there's going to be 8 milligrams left over. The doctor's office is not going to take the 8 milligrams, put it in a little plastic bag, and put the patient's name on it, stick it in the fridge, and next time they come back in the office, if that ever happens, give the patient that 8 milligrams that they already paid for. If that ever happens, get a good lawyer and get a new doctor. They have to dispose of it. So again, just a reminder to check with your insurance carrier to see what their guidelines are for coding for waste. But what we simply just do is, as far as the J codes, we always round up to the next full unit. So we need 22 milligrams, but we have to round up to 30. So in this case, we would code 22 milligrams of Absimixabab or Riopro as J0130 times three, because the 22 milligrams that the patient was provided, in this case it was given by an injection, and then the eight milligrams the provider's office has to medically dispose of. However, though, they had to buy that eight milligrams also. So that way then the doctor's office is not getting shorted for the medication that they had to purchase. So per the guidelines, again, double check your insurance carrier for proper coding based on patients. But per the guidelines though, you always round up to the next highest dosage. So then that way the provider is getting reimbursed fully for the amount of medication that the patient received and also if any that they had to medically waste. Now also too, as far as the coding, how it's getting to the body. If we look at, for example, in the HICPIX book where the J codes are, there it does not tell us the route of administration. So most publishers for HICPIX, because there's several different publishers out there, usually in the back, appendix A, B, C, one, two, three, however they decide to do their appendices in the back, will have an appendix based on the simply J codes. The, the uh, the table of drugs and biologicals have their own appendix in the back. And looking at that table, there we have all the brand names and generic names in alphabetical order. And then you scroll off to the side, you'll have the second column will be what is one dosage worth. And then it'll also be the route to administration and then the J code itself. So if you need to look up the code, if you know the name of the drug, whether it be brand name or generic name, do you recommend simply just look in the back appendix, depending if it's A, B, C, one, two, three, find out the name of the drug, and then you can scroll over, seeing how it's provided to the patient, what is the route, and then also, what is the code for itself. And that's how you code J codes and HICPICS. And don't forget too, to visit our new organization, the Specialty Coder Institute, launched earlier this month at specialtycoder.com. It's the newest but highest quality outpatient specialty coding credential organization, where all of our exams are fill in the blank, just like real world coding, Unlike other credentialing organizations where they're simply just multiple choice, if you know how to work a Scantron, you can pass. And then also our passing score is 90% and A minus B plus, depending on where you're at, as opposed to 70% C minus D plus in there. So it's higher quality education so that we then once you earn your credentials, it'll prove that you know your stuff. Again, visit the Specialty Coder Institute at specialtycoder.com. And as far as coding the J codes for HickPicks, that does include this episode of The Paul Chandler Show. I thank you for watching and have an awesome rest of your night.